there are tons and tons of programming languages created to do all sorts of things from web development, mobile app development, OS programming, and more. In this video, I'll be going through a list of the major programming languages, talking about why they were created and what they are used for. First on the list is C. C is one of those languages that's kind of old but very useful. Unlike other languages like Fortran and Assembly, it's kind of hard to phase out C because of what it signified when it was released. At that time, they set a new standard for OS programming similar to what AI is doing with content generation today. C was developed in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs, now AT&T Corporation. It was primarily designed with the goal of implementing the Unix operating system. Prior to the development of C, operating systems were written in assembly language which looked like this. As you'd imagine, it was complex and time-consuming to write. However, it was very low level and provided a human-readable representation of machine code, allowing programmers to have precise control over hardware, which is vital for low-level operations. The development of C provided a high-level alternative for operating system development. It offered a good balance between low-level control and high-level abstraction, making it easy to write portable and maintainable operating systems. It provided features like data structures, control flow structs, and functions, while allowing direct memory manipulations through pointers. It can perform specific operations like initializing a variable with the number of bits needed for that variable. The combination of features like this has made C a versatile language for various programming tasks, including systems programming, embedded systems and application development. It's also used in some parts of gaming and high-performance computing because of its efficiency. Next on the list is C++. C++ is a superset of C, basically an extension of C that provides additional capabilities. Its development began in 1979 when Bjarne Straustrup, a Danish computer scientist, started working on extending C. His primary goal was to add support for object-oriented programming and other features. C++ basically combines the lower level control and efficiency of C with object-oriented programming features like objects, inheritance, polymorphism, and more. It was also designed with backwards compatibility in mind, allowing existing C programs to be integrated with C++. It was initially called C with classes because it provided classes, a fundamental feature of object-oriented programming. It was later renamed to C++ to reflect its enhanced capabilities of C. It has the same applications as C and is the preferred option when object-oriented design is needed for lower-level projects. Next, we have Python, the favorite programming language of people who don't really know how to code. <laughs> Relax, I'm kidding. Python is basically a Swiss army knife, meaning it can do almost everything. It was created by Guido van Rossum with the goal of being a language that was easy to learn, readable, and focused on developer productivity. That's exactly what it does and why everyone loves it. Its syntax is clean and concise with minimal punctuations and no boilerplate code. It also uses indentation block structure and not curly brackets, making it visually appealing and easy to read. It offers object-oriented language features like classes, inheritance, exception handling, and functions, all while allowing the versatility not to use any of them. Unlike other object-oriented languages, anyone can begin to write Python without the knowledge of object-oriented programming. It is the ideal language for beginners to dip their toes into programming. Python is used everywhere from web development, data analysis, scientific computing, machine learning, automations, and more. Long story short, there aren't a lot of things that you can't do with Python. Next on the list is Java, the favorite programming language of people who know how to code. Java is also a Swiss army knife with a lot of applications. It was created in 1995 by a team led by James Gosling. The team aimed to develop a programming language that was platform suitable for consumer electronics. Java's key feature is platform independence, aka write once, run anywhere. Java programs can be compiled into bytecode, which can run on any platform with the Java virtual machine, making it highly portable and platform independent. It also comes with a comprehensive standard library that allows it to be used for networking, input and output operations, GUI development, and more. Java is one of the most popular programming language. It is the go-to language many universities use to teach object-oriented programming. With popular frameworks like Spring Boots, Java is used in enterprise software development, web development, mobile app development, scientific computing, and much more. Next is JavaScript, the programming language for web technologies. JavaScript was also created in 1995 by Brendan Eich to add interactivity and dynamic behavior to web pages. It quickly gained traction as a client-side scripting language for web development due to its ability to manipulate web pages, handle events, and interact with users. It was initially named Mocha and went through several name changes before settling on its current name. It was briefly known as LiveScript and later renamed to JavaScript to leverage the popularity of Java at that time. As web technologies evolved, JavaScript expanded beyond its original role and has become a versatile programming language now used in... Whoa! 
JavaScript expanded beyond its original role and has become a versatile programming language now used in client-side and server-side development. Today, it is the de facto web development language. It is supported by all major browsers and is the base for some popular frameworks like Node.js, React.js, Angular, and much more. If you've used any JavaScript frameworks, I would love to know your experience down in the comment section below. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be excellent. Next on the list is TypeScript, an uptight version of JavaScript. TypeScript is basically strongly typed JavaScript. It was designed by Microsoft in 2012 as a superset of JavaScript, meaning that any valid JavaScript code is also valid TypeScript code, technically. It aimed to enhance JavaScript by adding optional static typing and features to improve the experience and maintainability of large-scale JavaScript applications. JavaScript syntax is very relaxed. While this is good, it poses a problem for big large-scale projects because of the need for more structure and stricter rules. This is precisely what TypeScript gives. It forces you to write structured code. Any code written in TypeScript is compiled into plain JavaScript, which can be executed anywhere like regular JavaScript. TypeScript has the same applications as JavaScript and is the preferred option for large-scale projects where more structure is needed. Next, PHP. PHP is also one of those languages that a lot of people feel is old and ancient. However, I still believe PHP has a solid footing in software development today. It was created by Rasmus Lerdoff, a Danish-Canadian programmer, in 1995 as a set of tools to manage his personal website. PHP originally stood for Personal Home Page, but later became known as Hypertext Preprocessor as its functionality expanded. The first version of PHP was a simple scripting language that allowed for basic form handling and web server interactions. It quickly became popular among developers due to its simplicity and its ability to be embedded in HTML. It soared into popularity with PHP 4, which offered significant performance improvements and more mature object-oriented programming models. Today, PHP is one of the most popular server-side scripting languages, particularly for web development with remarkable frameworks like Laravel. It is widely used to build dynamic websites, web applications, content management systems, e-commerce platforms, and other web-based systems. Next is C-Sharp. C-Sharp was created by Microsoft in 2000 as part of the .NET initiative. It was designed to be a modern object-oriented programming language for building applications on the Microsoft.NET platform. It drew inspiration from various programming languages, including C++, Java, and Visual Basic. It's very similar to Java in terms of syntax. If you know Java, then c -sharp would be easy to grasp. c -sharp is the primary language for the .NET platform. The .NET platform is a framework created by Microsoft that enables developers to develop applications for everything. A big part of the .NET framework is platform independence, meaning that applications can be created for both Mac and Windows using .NET. They are used to build desktop applications and web applications as well. Next is Golang. Golang, also known as Go, is one of those unique languages I haven't had any experience with but would like to try. It was created by a team at Google in 2007. It was designed to address the challenges faced by developers working on large-scale software projects. It aimed to provide a simple, efficient language that supported modern programming practices. Among other things, its prominent feature is concurrency. Go has inbuilt support for concurrent programming. Go routines, lightweight threads, and channels are core language features that facilitate concurrent and parallel execution of code. This allows developers to write highly concurrent applications without the complexities typically associated with traditional threading. It's been adopted by numerous organizations for various use cases, including web development, system programming, cloud services, networking, data analysis, and more. If you've used Golang for any projects, I would love to hear your experience down in the comment section below. Last but not least, we have Swift, the bougiest programming language. Swift was created by Apple in 2010. It was designed to provide a modern, safe, and efficient alternative to Objective-C for iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS app development. It was basically designed by Apple for the Apple ecosystem. Swift introduced a modern expressive syntax that was intended to be easier to read and write than Objective-C, the previous language used in the Apple ecosystem. Swift included features such as type inference, closures, generics, and improved pattern matching, enabling developers to write concise and expressive code. It also offered high performance comparable to Objective-C. It incorporated modern compiler technologies and optimizations to generate efficient code. Swift is the primary language for the Apple ecosystem, so if you want to build anything native for Apple, Swift is the go-to language. That's it for this one. I didn't go through all the languages because there are a lot. However, some honorable mentions are Ruby on Rails used for large-scale efficient web development, Kotlin used for Android app development, and Rust used for lower-level and embedded systems. 
Let me know what your favorite programming language is and why you like it down in the comment section below the like button. As you might have been able to tell, mine is Java simply because it's the least complicated object-oriented programming language. It also has a lot of applications. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.